Tommy, what is augmented reality for those who don't know what it is? Augmented reality is additional information which we provide in a camera phone view or in other digital technology. Simple example, if you take your camera phone and you look at a city view, take a picture, you get the city. You're in Paris, you get a picture of Paris. What if I add information into that picture? So you are looking for the nearest McDonald's, you are looking for a cash machine, you're looking for the nearest place to find a toilet or an apartment that is for rent. Those kind of information can be embedded so when you're using your camera phone and looking at the normal picture of Paris, suddenly you see a dot, ah, here is the nearest toilet. So how does that work? It works so that the, the uh, real world has an overlay of data. And then when your mo mobile phone has the GPS location, so it knows where you are located, and it can identify which direction you are looking. And then we can add any kind of information. For example, in England, they had uh, London was overrun by dinosaurs. When the movie studios wanted to celebrate a big box set of, of uh, old classic movies. So you could go hunting for real dinosaurs, put yourself in a picture with them, which were all uh, across London. In reality, there were no dinosaurs, of course. You argue that augmented reality is the eighth media. It just runs through very quickly what the other ones are and why you think this is a media. Yes, so mass media, previously we've categorized seven mass media. Print, which includes magazines, books, newspapers, was the first mass media. Then came recordings, then came cinema, radio, television, the internet, and mobile. Those were the first seven mass media, and each one of them is different. We understand that even though the cinema and television show the same kind of content, they're actually different. We go to the movies, we pay every time when we saw the movie, television is for free, and we have the advertising to pay for that. In the same way, mobile is different from the internet, and now I argue augmented reality will become a new mass media. Just like the internet was a new mass media, like television was a new mass media. So give me a couple more examples. So th there's a wonderful example coming from China and Japan called Eye Butterfly. These are virtual reality butterflies. You can imagine in a city there are no butterflies, but now you can take your camera phone and start hunting for them. There are virtual butterflies floating around your city. If you catch one of them with your phone, you get a coupon. You can get a free coffee at Starbucks or you can collect enough of these and you get a free uh, Samsung Galaxy telephone. You were also talking about the example of the Japanese rapper who put a tour on augmented reality. Describe how that works. So in this case, the augmented reality was done in sound. So rather than looking for pictures, we were looking for sounds. And the sounds were now specific to a location. So this is the rapper in, in Japan who had created a new album and put his, each one of his songs to a specific location in Japan and asked his fans to go look for them. And when they found them, he would tell the story why this place is special. And, every, and the fans could listen to one song in that place. And then when the album came out, they could get all the songs together on the one album. So what are the numbers looking like in terms of use on this? Uh, augmented reality started three years ago. So uh, four years ago, there was none of it on the planet. Three years ago is where we essentially started with the first commercial applications. In two years, we hit five million users. Now the biggest platforms like iButterfly, like Layar, have several million users. So we are looking at the point, if the same growth curve uh, continues, we should probably get to one billion users of augmented reality by the year 2020. That's twice as many people as today buy a newspaper. Augmented reality will be a huge mass media in eight years. And so what do you think the key applications will be? Most of it, will, I think, early on will be entertainment. So we have a lot of examples in the areas where we have monsters, we have toys, we have children's cakes which have animation, we have striptease girls, you know, like uh, we have a Victoria's Secret catalog which is, for example, offering that she doesn't strip naked but the girl is fully dressed and when you take your augmented reality application you can see what the underwear looks like underneath and so forth. A lot of the early applications will probably be on the entertainment side. In the long run, we're going to see much more also on the information side. In Britain already, there are some museums that are introducing augmented reality so that you can see more 
of that item that you are looking at. When so you could look at a historic version of a building? For example, yes. You can see what London bombing looked like when, when London was bombed, or you can go to Berlin and see what the Berlin Wall looked like. Uh, it's, today it's all gone, but you can still see it. In Gettysburg, there are battlefields in America where you can see the, the soldiers actually doing the battle when in reality it's just a, a peaceful uh, field. Tommy, thanks for talking to me today. It's my pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.